So this is where we ended off last time. Here we have our libraries, and then we're reading in the data. We're also sourcing all the scripts in our R folder, and then we have the UI, where we basically only have a render UI function here, and here we have the output. And the render UI basically gives us all the um, graphs and plots here when we first load the application. So if we run it, the render UI function gives us the page views and also the device category. Now if we click on an action button, we get an action link here and the entire HTML gets removed. And then if we click the action button, the plots are going to be added back in. And that's what's happening in here. So we have the observer here. And if we click the action link, then we're going into the Google Analytics visualization function, which is defined here. And this one basically produces um, the panels with the visualizations in them. So here we have the switch statement, or the switch function, which is a switch statement here. So whatever action link we click, if we click the page views action link, then the page views function is going to be clicked, which is this .r file, which then creates the plot for us. And then in the scripts.js file, we have one function, which is going to remove here all the HTML, depending on what action button has been clicked. And then here it adds the um, action link basically back in. And then here we have the, um, here we basically um, have the, when we click the action link, then it determines, okay, what action link has been clicked. And then it sends the name of the action link from JavaScript to Shiny, and then also removes the action link here. And then in here, depending if there's a graph or visualization in our app or not, we're going to get the ID of the last visualization that is in here, if any visualization is in there. And if not, we're gonna get back the placeholder ID, which is here in the UI, and then the next plot is going to be plotted underneath that placeholder ID. And then we're also going to um, give, we're also going to get back the clicked link ID. So depending on what um, action link is clicked, we're going to get the ID of that action link. And we're using the ID for the visualization. So the ID of the action link that has been clicked and removed here going to be the ID of the visualization. And in this um, video, I just want to modularize um, our application to just make it simpler to debug and also to give some structure um, to our application. So as the application grows, it's more and more necessary to use modules <coughs> to just keep track of um, certain parts and to simplify the app. So we're starting out with a new R script. And in here we have basically two functions. One I'm going to call um, the main visualization function. And this function has an argument which is called ID. And then in here we have the namespace, we're going to call this ns, and then shiny has a function called ns here, which basically gives every ID that will be defined in this module, it has basically the ID in front of it. So we can use the same IDs in different modules, and the namespace ensures that the IDs won't clash. So in here we'll say ID, and then in here um, we'll say shiny. Then we have a tag list, and then in that tag list we basically have what we have in here. 
we have the shiny output from the render UI and then we have to wrap this inside NS. So what we'll do next, we're just going to replace what we have in here with the main, let's call this main visualization UI. Let's replace this here and it has an ID argument. So we'll say ID equals Let's call this main viz. So basically, the namespace of that ID I think will be um, main viz underscore first underscore plots. So we can have the first plots ID in any other module. And as long as we have a different ID here for a different module, maybe secondary viz UI and we give it an ID secondary viz, then we can have the same first plots ID in the secondary viz module as well without them clashing. So that's about it for the UI. <clears throat> Next we're going to create a main viz server function. So we have a function in here and in here we have the ID and a bunch of other arguments. Then we're going to say shiny module server. Here we have the ID and then um, we have the function and in here we have input session or session input. No, it's input. It doesn't matter, but output and then the session. And then in here, we're copy pasting everything that we already have in the server here. So what we had in here was the render UI plus the observe event function expression. We're going to put this in here and now we're going to specify additional arguments in, in that uh, function. So we have the ID here. So what we can do is we can already delete this, put in main visualization server and the ID is the same as this one. So we're going to link main visualization UI and main visualization server together with this ID. And then we have a bunch of other arguments. So one argument, so the arguments that we ha basically have to use is the data frame here. So we're going to call this DF and we have a DF argument here let's see web so we have another web data here and then we say here df equals web data then we also have other arguments which is here the clicked clicked link one so this so whenever the clicked so whenever um we send from JavaScript to Shiny, we send this one over. Um, the observe event gets triggered. So this is going to be another function argument as well as the header. So everything that's gonna be sent from JavaScript is going to be an argument. And then we also have um, the last panel here. And I think this should be about it. So, what we have to do now, we have to remove all the input dollar signs. Okay, six occurrences, remove all of them. And then we're going to replace, or we're not going to replace it, but we're going to add um, round brackets for all the reactives. So click link is reactive. 
header is reactive. Another click link. DF, it's not reactive. It's, it's going to be read in when we load the application. But yeah, header is reactive. And then we have last panel here, which is reactive. And another last panel here is also going to be reactive. So it gets the round brackets here. And I think that's about it. What we now have to do, we have to go here inside the server function. I'm just going to copy all of them. So the click link one, we have to wrap it in inside a reactive. So in here we say import dollar sign click link. So because this is not inside a, a reactive, previously it was, right? Because it was inside uh, the observer. So inside a reactive, but here it's not. It's just the main visualization server function. So we have to wrap this inside a reactive, otherwise Shiny um, gives us an error for this one. And then also for the other reactives, all of them, have to be inside the reactive and then we'll just switch them out and for dollar sign last panel and we're missing a comma here so now it should basically work everything should work like it worked before hopefully Let's see. So if I run the app, could not find the function main visualization UI. Okay, this is because I haven't saved this one yet. So I call this main visualization module. And I'll save this here in the R folder. And everything that's in the R folder gets sourced anyway by this. So let's run it. So if we click the action button, we get the action link. It seems to work fine. Okay, nice. So we've modularized the main visualization. Where the basically the part that we had in the server. And this gives us some more structure and it might be easier to debug later on when we have a lot of modules. Because what we want to avoid is basically a thousand lines of codes for the server and then something breaks and, and it's gonna be pretty hard to figure out what triggers what and what, what reactive um, is causing the problem. Um, yeah. So basically, what we can do now is we're just going to add two other visualizations to, to our application. So let's see what we can do. Um, yeah, one visualization that we can do, we can, we can see, um, I think, we can basically just do the general groupings, which is going to be very, very similar to the device category. So we're just going to copy paste this one. And then we say channel groupings. And here we have the data frame. And then we group by channel groupings. We summarize it. We count them. Oops, let's just say df equals web data. 
and let's see what we get. K should be the same output. And then we're going to have a pie chart again. Device category not found, so yeah, this should be channel groupings. Let's run it again. Okay, so this is what we get. Um, again, a pie chart, and then we return the final plot. Now we save this. Um, we'll just call this channel. groupings. We save this one and then what we need to do is here first we have to go into the Google Analytics um, R script and then in here we're going to add the function and we're just going to call it channel groupings is equal to basically what I called the function, yeah, channel groupings, df, and we're going to save this one, and then we're also going into our um, main visualization module that we just created, and we're going to add another letter, so another unique um, ID, and in here, we're going to copy paste what we had in here, basically channel groupings. Copy paste this here. And now it should be added. Let's see. So if we run the app again, the render UI gives us three, three plots, page views, device category, and channel groupings. If we delete one, two, three, we should get all the action links and if we add it back yeah we get all the visualizations back so now we can add arbitrary amount of visualizations we just have to keep track of the headers and of the unique ids and basically um yeah just basically extend extend this vector here with the ids and then also extend this vector with the um, with the headers, so we can keep track of it. So in the in the next video, I think what we're going to do is we're going to utilize a little bit more um, JavaScript to get the sidebar going and to get the and to populate the sidebar with the action links, and then um, yeah use JavaScript and, and CSS to do that. I'll see you in the next one.